Hello and welcome to episode 36 of the Roll Jump Media Podcast. I am joined today once again by my co-hosts, Jose and Luis. What is going on, my guys? How is it going? Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Saturday. It's been good. <laughs> <clears throat> happy pre-Valentine's Day. Um, uh, day of... What is it? Day of love and friendship? That's a good synopsis to me. <laughs> but yes, good morning. Happy, happy pre Valentine's Day. Happy February 13th. I like it. All right. So today, on this Saturday, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking a little bit about th- uh, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, Persona 5 Strikers, The Last of Us TV series, Sonic, E3, Ubisoft, and their AAA release um, outlook video game sales, and much more. But before we do all of that, I actually wanted to, before we get into what we've been playing, I wanted to bring up our draft that we've been doing. Um, not too many changes, but we all now have one game that has released, and the scores right now are as follows. So right now, I am in the lead with 16 points because Hitman 3 scored an 86 on Open Critic. Uh, and you and Luis are tied at 12 points. Little Nightmare 2 has an 82 at the moment. And Cyber Shadow also has an 82. Hmm, nice. I, was, I wasn't aware. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're all looking pretty good so far. And What's the next release, you know? Oh, uh, yes. See. Yes, that's a good idea. So the upcoming releases... Um, next one is Bravely Default 2. That's on our team. That's on February 26th. So um, <clears throat> do, mm. that's coming up. That Who has that? Uh, Jose. Jose has that one. Jose has um, that one. And the next really? one after that. The... <laughs> 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 and the next one after that is Monster Hunter Rise a month later. Oh, yeah, that's going to plummet your scores. Yeah, yeah. that's an automatic L. I don't know who who they were thinking. Just kidding. MH fans. Yeah. I'm attacking, yeah. please. <laughs> All right. I'm so... going to destroy y'all. No, <laughs> Yo, Luis, man, his team, it's pretty scary. Resident Evil Village makes me scared now because I think that game's going to do, like, 90. So, um, Jose, did you want to, did, was there any game that got announced or anything that you want to switch out? Because I, I heard a little bit of trepidation in your voice when I said you had Bravely Default 2. Nah, I'm good. I'm going to stick to my, to my instincts. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right. Sounds good. Now, we can move on to what we've been playing. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and take it away. All right. So um, this past week, uh, I've actually started playing more, uh, a little bit more. Um, I For the 2DS, I mean, I've been playing Monster Hunter Stories. I already finished the, the main story. And after the main story, there's a, there's a post game. Uh, where you have other missions and other side quests, and um, so uh, I'm still unsure if I if I'm gonna keep playing uh, those, uh, keep playing uh, the game to complete those quests. Uh, but because uh, um, there's other games that uh, that I'll be talking about that came out. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've been having fun with, with that game. Um, Honestly, like I wasn't expecting it to to like Monster Hunter Stories, uh, wow. but I know uh, having having a played uh, more, uh, I think I'm I'm a little excited, a little more excited about uh, uh, Monster Hunter Stories too. Um, it's also a good way to to uh, memorize or or learn the the monsters' names. I already have a few that 
that if I see, I, I can, I can, um, what's it called? I can recognize. Oh, that'll be so, fine. Yeah, so prepare myself for for rice as well, you know. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, that that's fun. Um. But I don't know if I I have a few other games, three DS three DS games that I, that I'm on my backlog. So again, I might continue playing that or just move on to another one. But we'll see. Uh, for the Switch, for the Switch, um, I I haven't been playing anything on the Switch. Um. Yesterday, uh, a new game came out for the Switch, and it's uh, Super Mario, uh, uh, what? Uh, Super Mario 3D World. Um, I haven't been able to start it, uh, but uh, I'm I'm pretty sure I, uh, that's the next game that I'll, I'll be playing on the Switch. Uh, but uh, I mean, I haven't touched the Switch yet. Uh, but I I have touched the PlayStation PlayStation Five. Oh, okay. uh, I started. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I put up Apex finally after a while, uh, but uh, I put it up, but I, I didn't play the ah. game. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't know why I am, because I put it up yesterday, and uh, like I, I think it was because it was on Olympus. <laughs> the, oh, you didn't want to play? You didn't want to play on Olympus? Yeah, and I don't know. I was like, you know what? I'm not feeling Olympus right now. Uh, I'll just go. <laughs> I'll just continue uh, playing Spider Man because I I've, um I started Spider Man like I think like last month and or no not even like in December but then there was a pause because um uh, I don't know I I started focusing on 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 other games I uh, Pikmin Pikmin three I think um mm-hmm. so so I let it there um. And I started, uh, I continue playing it th- this week again. And I mean, I'm having a blast again. I mean, um, just swinging. I remember you saying that just swinging through the city is like, like the best thing. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, basically. It is. It, it's just, it's fun to, to go around and do side missions and fight enemies. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Um, I think I'm about 40% in, in the story. Okay. Uh, or in the game. So, so yeah, uh, I've been having fun with that as well. Nice. Are we talking about the original Spider-Man? The yeah, game? the original Spider-Man. The remastered. Got you. Okay. Uh, one question. It's a little bit of a detailed question. Um, you know I love movement, so I'm going to ask you about something about movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your favorite string of movements to pull off so far? So, for example, for me... What I like to do, if I can pull it off, is kind of like web zip or like swing and then chain it chain it into a wall run and then uh, fling myself around a 90 degree angle on a building. Mm-hmm. That's probably like one of my oh. top, top maneuvers that you can pull off. I don't know if you have a favorite go-to that you, uh, that you use. Not really, actually. When, whenever you're swinging, right? Whenever you're swinging through the yeah. city. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mm, I, I haven't really paid attention to to the movements. Uh, Am I just uh, weird, or I don't know? <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. But, uh, but yeah, like uh, I think you're more focused on that <laughs> than I am. Sure. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I have uh, like a preferred maneuver. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, so I disappointed you. No, it's okay. You, you'll learn. <laughs> but yeah next, next time i'll play I'll, I'll make sure to to have some time to practice some maneuvers and sweet all right but yeah cool. that's, that's pretty much it what i've been playing all right luis that's cool man jose all right so for me uh i've actually played uh, a bit of animal crossing um uh, this last last weekend actually um just got on um we're actually with you ray and and our boy andres yeah um that was i mean it was fun um he's kind of remodeling his island so at least someone's playing i haven't (laughs) actually invested time in my island into my actual island you know decorating and all that stuff you got roaches i know that (laughs) what 
<laughs> you got roaches on your uh, island? Not yet, I don't think. Okay. I haven't been away that long. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but I know there's like a the festival event coming up on the 15th. Oh, so That's right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to definitely um, play it that day uh, just to kind of get all the, the goodies that they're going to offer. Mm, and then I I finished Soul Silver. Um, I stopped playing that. The, mm. I did pass the Naslog successfully, so that was good. You did, and you then did. yeah. Yo, you're um, a pro, man. I can't I can't stand up to y'all. <laughs> well, eh. um, I did lose a few of my Pokemon, so it was a lot of grinding. Um, and that's something that I found out about Soul Silver is that it's very the it 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 you have to grind a lot to keep up with the leveling of the other trainers. Mm. Um, and that's one of the flaws, I guess, that a lot of people have with that game. And it's a flaw that I hadn't really noticed until I did the Nuzlocke. And, and yeah, it's it's very it's very weird how they spread out the leveling in the game. And, you know, you're very, you're like at level 19 at one point and then the next gym it jumps to like level twenty five or something crazy like that. Whoa. So Whoa. yeah, but um but that was fun. Um and then uh I started playing uh Detective Pikachu <laughs> for the three DS. Um and I know it's a weird choice, but uh I think having fun with that. Um I saw that movie. So I mean I guess the game the movie is based on the game slightly, so I mean it's a little uh, like the plot of the game is slightly spoiled for me already, but it's really nice to to play a a new Pokemon game that I hadn't played before, and I'm actually enjoying it. I mean, it's very like story driven. Um, okay. And that's something that like I hadn't seen in a game before. Like it's actually very weird to to see these like this actual storyline you know, dialogue, voice acting. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's a, it's a different, it's a nice change of, of pace. Um, and yeah, I've been enjoying that. And yeah, that's, that's been pretty much it for me. I've been taking it slow. Um, I really, I do want to get back into um, playing some um, PlayStation games. Um, I mean, our brother, uh, Marcos, has been downloading quite a few <laughs> um, PlayStation games. So, I mean, I have a, a selection um, that I can choose from. So we shall see. Okay. Do you have one that's topping the list right now? I don't know. I want to I wanna play the Spider-Man games um, okay. for sure. Okay. And I know Marcos, I mean, he also downloaded, Marcos is my bro- our brother. Um, he also downloaded uh, Final Fantasy 15, I believe, or 14, what was it? 14. No, no, no. 15. Um, <laughs> There's too many. Too many. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so, I mean, that could be another option. I mean, I've, I've always said that JRPGs are pretty interesting. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see which one I start with. But I think I'm going to get to all of them eventually. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, just play 14 with me. All right, so um, next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm becoming that meme is it, again. Is it still free? Damn. Oh yeah, you are. That exact meme. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's free. Yeah, it's up until sixty. Oh. Well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Did you have yeah, anything else to say? No, that that was it for me. All right. All right. Those are some. You know what? That Nuzlocke is very impressive to me, man. Kudos to you. Yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, it adds a different. It's a uh, it adds a level of difficulty that wasn't in the game before. It makes it more interesting. No doubt. Okay, so as for me, I have two games I want to talk about. The first one I want to talk about is um, Metroid Prime Hunters on the DS. So, um, my Metroid kick has kind of waned a little bit, but it's still pretty strong. And I wanted to 
uh, finish uh, Hunters before hopefully the trilogy comes out this year. Um, give it another shake to see if I'm missing out on something um, special. I would say that Hunters is special in its own right. Um, the control scheme, it you do get used to the control scheme, but I'm playing on my 3DS, and that joint's kind of heavy. Like when you're trying to use the <laughs> the uh, the pad to to move around the the camera and hold it and move at the same time, and your hands do get cramped. Like Luis was talking about how his hand was yes. hurting. <laughs> <laughs> like like after 15 minutes or so or less like you'll start to get a pain in your hand you're like oh my gosh why why does it hurt <laughs> yeah yeah and you wait you're playing on the like the 3ds right like yeah okay yeah because i was playing on the 2ds and i i believe the 2ds is much smaller so i think it made it a little worse uh ah, but yeah true. it's uh, it's so uncomfortable it gets uncomfortable after a while it does and how the game is formatted is um, it, it does feel like a prime game, except that the exploration is a little more um, straightforward. So, so far, I think I've been to like four different levels. And um, to avoid spoilers, refer to the timestamps in the description. How it works is like you get these octolifts, I think they're called, from uh, visiting different areas of the level. And you need three keys in order to go to a certain spot and fight like a boss. So um, the way it's formatted, it's not what I prefer Metroid Prime to be like. I want it to be, um, you just go, you go through different areas organically on your own because you're interested and then you happen to run into things, scanning and all that good stuff. It feels more organic, more natural how you're approaching the game. This one feels more contrived, like you're going down a path like, okay, I know what I'm, I got to do for this level. I'm going to get these keys, go in that boss, and then finish it. In uh, other Prime games, the world feels more connected to where it's not... Your brain's not telling you it's a level. It's more of a, a cohesive experience, which I think is very important for Metroid Prime games. Not to say that this, it's not fun. It's fun still shooting enemies, going to your morph ball, doing all your abilities, finding secrets. But... Yeah, overall for for a DS game, how it translated the Metroid Prime series onto the DS, I think it did a pretty good job. Yes, I agree. Awesome. And the last game I wanted to talk about is the one I streamed yesterday, which is Lost Planet 2. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about Lost Planet 2, so if you're sensitive to spoilers... Um, uh, if you're listening, I mean, I'll wave my hand <laughs> to say that I'm done with spoilers. So, uh, Lost Planet 2, well, I'm not spo not in spoiler territory yet, so feel free to listen. So, Lost Planet 2, it's developed by, it was developed by Capcom back in 2010, it was released. And um, it's a third-person shooter. I went over yesterday, or last podcast. And for the stream... Um, I was feeling very confident. I was I thought I could finish the campaign in a few hours, but man, was I incorrect. So this is what has happened. Y'all ready for the story? Yes. Okay. It's, so the story has it has a it has to do with a certain level. So I spent probably an hour and 20 minutes on just one series of on one chapter. And this is how it went. So, um, to avoid spoilers, refer to the timestamps in the description. The first part you go through, and you're on a you're like on a train set piece. Think kind of like Uncharted, but not as much like movement back and forth. Like you you can move back and forth, but the first part you're kind of stuck in this one area of the train, and you're uh, exchanging fire with the people on the other train. And then there's also these cannons, man. Ooh, dude, cannons in this game, if you don't take them out, they are brutal. Like, they'll almost one-hit you. Um, but the cool thing about this game is that you can hold down the start button, and as long as you have this uh, thermal energy, they call it, you're able to regenerate your health. Um, the thing is, is that in hard mode, I think they reduce how much you can get. So you have these AI, AI companions. So you can have three AI companions and... Um, if you're low on health, you kind of have to bank on them giving you energy in order to regen your health. And uh, so if everybody's out of energy, even the AI companions, you're kind of you're kind of done for, <laughs> and you just have to have to uh, respawn. 
And the thing is that you have limited respawn. So depending on how many uh, data posts you get, so they're kind of like capture the flag posts kind of deals, you can um, up the amount of respawns you can get. And you also have like a set amount of respawns at the start. Um, I'm kind of gushing a lot. You guys following so far? <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Okay, cool. So that's kind of like the premise of how Lost Planet works. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So you work your way through the train, and uh, on the next part of the level, they take you to uh, moving all the way up to the train. That wasn't too much of an issue. Um, you just have to keep your distance and, and snipe a little bit. And this last part is the thing. So they have these things called acrid. Um, they're monsters that are part of the world, part of the lore. There's noise coming. My bad. I got noise on my end. All right. It's cool. So um, the acrid are monsters that are part of the world. And um, they have weak spots. They have orange weak spots. And this one in particular. So what you have to do is there you, on the end of the train, there's this cannon. And you have to aim the cannon at certain parts of that big monster that's following you through the sand and the um, the train tracks. And the issue was is that the cannon does very little damage and the monster has many um, orange weak spots to hit. And the complication comes where you have to load up the canyon, cannon yourself sometimes because the AI is not that great at points. And also... Uh, in the lower deck, there is coolants that you had to activate in order for the train to not overheat because the monster is attacking it. So you're kind of juggling a whole bunch of things at one time in order to not die and also finish the level. So I legit was, was juggling reloading the cannon, going to the coolants on the bottom to not die, and freaking begging for my team to like give me energy for like a good 30 to 40, 30 minutes probably. And, uh, Sounds very high high paced though. It I is mean, very it yeah. Is, yeah yeah. I feel like that would make it really exciting, you know? <laughs> or, yeah. Or what did you think yeah. about that? Yeah, so it was very exciting. But the main crux, like um, the game, mostly is about third person shooting, throwing bombs, exploding them in the in mid air, uh, experimenting with your weapons. And this section was just like it gets a like, if you fail, which is easy to do. It starts to get tedious, and it was just unfortunate that for the stream I had to deal with oh, that, that for that yeah for a yeah. while. Um, the good thing is, is that like there was people in the stream actually. There was like four, four, three people. We're small guys. We're we're, we're trying to grow, <laughs> and um, none of them. Well, I think one of them was familiar with the game, but nobody was. I was. I asked in the backseat and helped me out to like finish it faster. But um, I don't think anybody was either. They didn't want to, which is fine, and, or they didn't know. So um, I did find little things like uh, there were data posts on the train to give you more lives. And there were like little beacons for you to get more um, thermal energy. So that really helped out. And I was able to finish it eventually. So fun time, but it was stressful those first that first hour and a half. Oh, first hour and a half? Well... <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. want me? <laughs> yeah. If you guys, if you guys look at the the um the video that's up on the on our channel, like uh, yeah, you'll see me, you'll see me <laughs> suffer. Damn. Yeah. Well, at least you did. It. <laughs> that's right. But enough about what I've been playing. It is time for the news. Y'all ready for this? Yes. Let's do it. All right. So we're gonna start off with um. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury reviews. So on Metacritic, Super Mario 3D World has a 90 out of 100. So pretty dang good. And I have a quote. I have quotes from a couple of sources here. The first quote I have is um, from Video Games Chronicle, which gave the game a 100 out of 100. And they say... 3D World is Nintendo EAD at its, imagina at its imaginative, brilliant best and remains a platforming triumph. Bowser's Fury, while not nearly as inventive, offers hours of additional challenges and a welcome excuse to revisit a classic. The Gamer gave it a 90 out of 100 and they said, ultimately, Super Mario 3D World in this package 
is the best that is the best that game has ever been with the increased speed and ease of multiplayer access making it far more enticing than ever before bowser's fury meanwhile is essentially the super mario odyssey dlc that never was and the last quote i have is from cog cog connected which gave it a 80 out of 100 and they say these two titles offer distinct yet similar Mario experiences, especially if you're new to 3D World, this double feature is an absolute steal of a deal. On the other hand, anyone who played this back in 2013 has a more nuanced decision to make. Whether or not Bowser's Fury is enough to draw or pull you back in depends on what sort of Mario game you're hungry for. So that's all the quotes I have. Um, I would say pretty in line to what I expected. Uh, people giving it perfects because Mario is freaking amazing and others pointing out little things here and there that weren't so great so or the greatest so um, are you guys like was was this were these the scores that you guys expected what do you guys think about, you guys think about Bowser's Fury so far, Fury so far? Um, well I mean it's Mario um, so I mean it was kind of expected for it to get priced um, to some extent. Um, and I know that when it was first released and for the Wii U, it did get uh, praise for being one of the best. Some, some people say it's the best um, Mario 3D Mario game yet. So, I mean, it was expected. I'm actually a little shocked at the the first review that you mentioned, um, saying that it's Bowser's Fury is not as innovative, inventive, or, or yeah. inventive. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, just because I, f I feel like this Bowser, this depiction of Bowser is not something that we've seen before. Um, the whole kaiju thing that they went with is pretty. I mean, it's pretty inventive, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, at least in a Mario game. Um, yeah. I guess we would just have to play it and see what they meant um, just to kind of understand that comment. But um, I didn't get a chance to play the, the first one. Um, Luis pre-ordered it. Um, it already arrived. And I'm, I'm sure I'm going to play it eventually, you know, and hopefully enjoy it like how, you know, the re reviews seem to suggest. You know, it's pretty enjoyable. So yeah, we shall see. Yeah. Yeah, um, I have yeah. some thoughts about the inventiveness, but uh, I don't want to get into spoilers. Uh, go ahead, Luis. Uh, but yeah, um, just to um, to go along with Jose, what Jose said, um, uh, even before uh, this game, well, when, when this game was announced, you know, uh, we talked about it in the podcast, and I said that it, it was like the one of the games that I wasn't able to to play in at, in the Wii U with the Wii U. Um, and I, you know, hearing people talk about uh, this game was, they would always say how you know how amazing it was. And like I said, it it's the the uh, it's a lot of people's favorite Mario. Uh, and I always wanted to to see why that is. Um, and I mean, looking at the, at the reviews, it, it kind of uh, backs it backs up their their statements. You know that that this Mario is is a uh, uh, an amazing game, and yeah, I'm you know I, I want to try it already. Uh, I already have it with me, uh, and I'm excited to to play it and see for myself. You know what? If first of all, if I enjoy it, uh, but uh, I want to see for myself if it's if it's like a masterpiece, as, as a lot of people say. Yeah, and. Um... I guess one of the main draws also is the co-op, right? You can play you can play the the levels with up three other players up to, I believe. But uh, yes, yeah, yeah. There's like online and, and you can play with other players, which is yeah. crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that seems like so much fun. But um, yeah, you guys are excited for it. As for me, um, I was kind of excited for it. Um, at the moment, I don't plan to get it. I mean, I still have the. 3D All-Stars, all um, getting all the Galaxy um, stars and revisiting Sunshine, finish revisiting Sunshine on the 3D All-Stars package. So I can wait a little while, 
But I think eventually I might pick it up because I am also interested in why this game is laud or is um, praised as much as it is. Right. All righty, Mario dosage early in the year. You love to see it. Next thing we have, we have Persona 5 Strikers reviews. Persona 5 Strikers has an 85 out of 100 on PS4 on Metacritic so far. The game is going to release on February 23rd. And I have two quotes from different outlets. The first one is from Gaming Age, which gave the game a 91 out of 100. And they say, all in all, I've really enjoyed my time with Persona 5 Strikers. I played a whole lot of Dynasty Warriors and spin-off games in that genre, and I would argue that Persona 5 Strikers feels like one of the more unique takes on a Musou game that I've ever seen. It really, honestly, feels like a full-fledged Persona sequel in both story and combat, but with a heavier emphasis on action. Combining these two distinct flavors of video game franchises works exceptionally well here, and if you're into either type of game, you'll likely find something to love about Persona 5 Strikers. And the second quote is from uh, The Sixth Axis, the sixth axis that gave the game an 80 out of 100, and they said, Persona 5 Strikers is an excellent welcome back party for the franchise. It takes a formula that's is proven to work and takes it to a new place by adding a whole new combat system that allows you to play as the whole team rather than the main character we're all used to. This said, although Persona 5 Strikers is excellent in its own right, there's enough that's been strip, stripped back to make the game to make this game work that it can't reach the lofty heights of the original. So those were two quotes I chose to um, emphasize for the Persona 5 Strikers Metacritic reviews. Um, I'm actually very overjoyed that people are loving it and finding very little to nitpick about it or to or cons about it. Um, what, what are you guys' impressions on Strikers? Are you guys uh, interested in it, um, especially coming off of Age of Calamity? Is, are you fatigued on the genre? Mm, I'm not, actually. Um, it's I don't know. I, I feel like that uh, genre um, of games is pretty. I think it's simple enough that it, it it's just um, it's just so it's fun. Like it's pure fun, you know. Um, and I'm not saying that like the game. I haven't played the game. Um, and I'm not saying that these types of games don't have any sort of plot or, you know, intricacies. Um, but I think at its core, it's very. It's just pressing buttons and you know killing all these enemies at the same time you know mm -hmm. which is what i don't know it's there's something um innately fun about that <laughs> um based on like the the comments that you shared um i do feel like you know it was i mean it was what i expected um i think those same thing those same highlights and i guess comments on the game are very similar to you know the age of calamity comments um in that you know yeah maybe some things were kind of stripped back from like the usual uh legend of zelda games um, but that's to be expected you know it's understandable because it's a very different type of game um and you know just like the the comment said um I think it was the second one um, where they mentioned, you know, um, having the opportunity to play the other characters, not just the main character. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a highlight. It's always a highlight in, in any, you know, um, well, like the Warrior uh, Warriors games. Um, right. Especially like with Legend of Zelda and it, here you get to play, I'm assuming you get to play the other um, fan, Phantom Thieves. Yes, sir. Um, so, so that's that's always a highlight. It's always fun to kind of get the opportunity to play a game that wasn't playable um, previously. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, I haven't played the first Persona, uh, Persona Five, um, and I, I believe this is canon to that, um, to the main series. So, 
I don't know if I'll, I don't know if we'd get it, at least right now, um, maybe down the line once, you know, we actually sit down and play Persona 5 and kind of, you know, <laughs> explore that universe a little better. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, good for them. Kudos. Kudos to the team. Yeah, well said. Yeah, yeah same thing for me. Um, it's cool. Um, well, I, I've never played Persona 5, right? And, um, uh, and it's cool, but I, I, I've seen uh, Andres, our, our peer, <laughs> um, right. play play the game, and, and I've heard you, uh, Ray, about your experience with Persona Five, mm -hmm. and and we've seen uh, the animated series, and and we've seen, I know these characters, and um, I mean I really like these characters; they're really fleshed out, and, and being able to play them uh, um, in this kind in this kind of game. Um, the uh, in Phantom, uh, not Phantom, sorry, in Persona, uh, <laughs> uh Strikers, yeah, uh, or is it Phantom Strikers? Uh, it's just Strikers, it's oh, it's Strikers. Yeah. Um, it's cool to see them, or it's cool to be able to to play them, uh, in a different way, uh, similar to you know, Age of Calamity and all these warrior games. Um, uh, I, honestly, uh, you know, I'm I really like that kind of game. Uh, it's just it's just fun, you know, to just go around uh, making combos and beating beating up uh, enemies. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, it's it, it's. Uh, I mean, the, the art style as well. You know, it's a really pretty game to to look at. Uh, so I'm 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 interested in the game. Uh, I don't know if I, I should like. Um, play Persona 5 first and then get into the uh, Strikers. Uh, but for sure, it, it's a game that maybe in the future I'll, I'll try it out. Yeah. Um, I, I saw conflicting reports. I forget. I don't remember the um, outlets, but one said that you're, you'll, you won't be confused and the other one says that you're better off playing uh, Persona 5 and getting familiar with it. So I don't, I don't know who, who, who to believe. Um, I'll, let, I'll, let you, I'll let you guys know when I play it when it comes out later uh in a week's in in over a week it's time so um yeah for these reviews um just it was pretty much what i expected it's good to, to get validation to to uh to the fact that this game is good and it's going to be an enjoyable time a worthy sequel to the original persona 5 which is loved by so many people and Roy royal is loved by even more people um i did peep the i was a little trepidatious at first i know i maybe luis remembers or even jose um that i was like i don't know if i'm gonna get this because it's a muso game and so i don't i don't really dig those too much you guys remember that when i yeah i was a little, mm -hmm. I was a little yeah you're you're very unsure <laughs> yeah even though it was Persona, so this time uh, I did see some videos on the combat, and I'm very surprised at how much how much it feels like. Well, stripping back the um, taking into consideration that you're fighting a bunch of enemies at the same time, um, the amount of mechanics they seem to have uh, have kept from Persona Five, the original, into this game, and even Royal, I'm guessing, to uh, to augment the gameplay and make it uh, unique, as one of the reviewers said here, uh, it's it, it makes me excited. It makes me excited that the DNA is still there, and I'm going to feel most likely that I'm playing a Persona game rather than a Muso game. So, really looking forward to this release. Character development. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's enough for the reviews for this uh, for this week. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and talk about a little bit of um, regular news. So this is going to be about the Last of Us TV series. I'm pretty sure y'all heard heard about the castings that they made for the TV series. Yes. Yep. All right. So as a synopsis, uh, I'm going to reference Michael McWhorter's um, article from Polygon. So two big castings were made. The first one is for Joel, and it's, he's going to be played by uh, Pedro Pascal. 
star of The Mandalorian and Or Orberin Martell in Game of Thrones. Um, and for Ellie, it's going to be Bella Ramsey, who was also in Game of Thrones as Liana Mormont. Uh, one more detail. Craig Mazin, who worked on Chernobyl, is writing and co-executive producing the series with Neil Druckmann and also the composer from the games, Gustavo Santiolala, Santiolala will, sorry if I butchered that, will score the series just like he scored the games. So, pretty two big casting made uh, recently. What do you guys think about it? Um, I mean, I, I think it, I think it was a pretty pretty good casting, uh, pretty good casting choices. Um, I think sometimes, like when they do like TV or movie adaptations of video games, the choices that you know Hollywood makes are kind of. Um, bizarre. Um, yeah. But this one, um, I think they, I mean, at least you know, aesthetically, they they look the same as the, or or they look similar to the video games. Like I can I can kind of see it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's something that I don't usually, like I mentioned, with movie adaptations, it's kind of weird sometimes to be like, oh yeah, I see it. Um, especially like the Resident Evil films. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Chris Redfield <laughs> in that movie. Um, a crime, but anyways, uh, I think these two are, I mean, are pretty, pretty accurate. And then, I mean, they both come from really high profile, um, shows, um, especially Pedro Pascal that comes from, you know, two like huge franchises. Um, and, and so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they bring to the table. Um. Especially Pedro Pascal, I'm excited to see what he he does. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think they're awesome. Luis, do you have any uh, thoughts before I share mine? Uh, yeah, just really quick. Uh, same, um, I agree with Jose. What Jose said, um, I think the the casting was uh, it's pretty good. Um, I I did see some criticisms from from fans. You know that they didn't, uh, especially with Ellie's casting. You know, they said they didn't really like it or she didn't even look like her and things like that uh and honestly um at least for me or in my opinion I, I, there's i think there's more to to the characters than their um than the, how they look you know um, and if, if they're able to to capture you know ellie's energy and personality and and joel's personality i mean that's i think that's pretty cool that's that, that should be um enough i guess um but yeah i mean personally i i like i like the the casting um both of them you know they were in game of thrones uh both of them had um had pretty um what's it called uh, pretty um outstanding uh, i want to say outstanding like performances like they really grabbed people's attention uh, yes. in that show in game of thrones uh they were memorable so and i mean pedro pascal is just doing everything right now so He's really talented, so it's really cool to 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 be able to see them play these characters that you know that we played as or, or we know about. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see who else joins the the team um, as time goes on, and I'm really excited to to see this this show. Yeah, well said. Um, I think the I think the same thing, similar, pretty much the same thoughts as y'all. Um, I think people were saying that on social media, I was seeing Jamie Lannister, the guy who plays Jamie Lannister as, <laughs> as Joel and, um, Ellen right. Page as Ellie. People were like forefronting those two, two actors to do it. But the thing is that, um, although I was a little upset at, at Neil Druckmann because of what he, what he decided to do with uh, The Last of Us Part Two. Um, I, he knows the universe really well. Like he's been there for at Naughty Dog for a while. He knows uh, the Last of Us in and out, and I think he'll do. He's going to do this series justice. So I trust him. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have to see. I don't know when this is going to release. I don't know if we have like a, a release date or window, but. 
if we have any more news yeah, for don't you don't know either yeah i don't know either um i think yeah I want to say 2022, but I don't know. I'm not too sure. I think they they only. Uh, I remember they they stated that you know a, a show was in the works, but I don't think they've put a, a release date or a release window. Yeah. Yeah, it's it looks all like we, it's still up in all, the air. All I know is that all we need now is a Jack and Dexter anime. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, because we have we have an uncharted we have an uncharted film coming out. We have a Last of Us show coming out. So just to complete the you know the trifecta, it's it's only it's only fair, you know. <laughs> Yo, a Jack and Daxter anime would do would fit so well. The aesthetic, the movements. Oh my gosh, Sony, please. <laughs> but have you done whole thing? <laughs> I. I I had never entertained the idea, but that would be so dope. All right, so that that was the last of us. <laughs> um, a little bit of uh, a bitty itty bitty piece of news: Sonic, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie sequel was teased officially. Uh, this is from Martin Robinson from Eurogamer uh, on the on the film's official Twitter account. The Title, the official title was revealed, which is Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and the movie is going to be coming out on April 8th, 2022. Not mu nice. much more to say. More to say. Yeah. yeah, nice indeed. Nice indeed. Even the title was pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next thing on the list, uh, something that's pretty interesting. Uh, Digital E3, or the E3 plans for this year. This is from Taylor Lyles from The Verge. Have you guys heard about, peaked about what the ESA is planning to do with E3 this year? Um, I heard that they were trying to make it like a virtual conference or like a virtual thing. Yeah. 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 You're, you're on the right track. So this is what I have, uh, the bullet points. Did I... I'm just going to say it anyway. Uh, I got it from Taylor Lyles from The Verge, these details, and uh, these are it right here. So the Entertainment Software Association, which is the ESA, announced E3 2021 is happening this year and could be going digital, according to Video Games Chronicle. There are a few plans that they have in mind. Plans to have multiple two-hour keynotes from game partners, an awards show, a preview night on June 14th, and small streams from various game publishers, influencers, and media partners. Uh, additional plans include uh, the media to have previews a week before, game demos at the event to be released to uh, on consumer platforms, and partner companies to conduct thousands of scheduled meetings with media, uh, with media featuring playable game demos. So, um, yeah, so basically it looks like they're trying to capture the magic of E3 digitally. Um, seems like a lot of work. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts about these plans that they have? Do you think they'll come to fruition? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, well, first of all, I think, uh, I think after last year, I think people or, you know, they realized that, you know, E3 is very it's it's an important important um uh, event you know for for gamers um because i don't know i feel like last year it, it, something was missing you know like during that summer we had the summer games fest but um i don't think that that was as as um as impactful i guess as as an mm -hmm. e3 uh, and i mean it's always fun you know during this time to to learn about announcements or learn about games see uh, gameplay and things like that. Um, so I'm glad that they they they're uh, thinking of ways to to bring it back um, and, and thinking of ways to make it work for for people. Uh, I think like if it's a, a virtual event, uh, it might work. Uh, I know a lot of uh, like uh, again last year, uh, it, there were a lot of like events, um, like for example, uh, what was it the, the there was like a DC 
the DC Comics event, you know, the oh, where, right. where they where, uh -huh, where they were um they made announcements and and you know people could join uh, the, the 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 presentation and, and and then you know they will have like a I don't know like a ten minute break and then go to the next event or something like that. So they could make something like that um, work. Uh, it'd be really cool to to be able to do that. Um, and, and you know, there's there's there was a schedule. You know, they could have a schedule, and you can choose which which um, presentation or or which because uh, they, they said they were going to have like uh, speakers and different uh, media uh, partners and 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 game publishers and things like that. So it'd be cool to to treat it like as a you know you can go wherever you want and just click on on, on a link and then you you had the presentation mm. and similar to like uh, they did the same thing with like the Tokyo thing the Tokyo game show um, in Japan so I, I think they could make it work I think they could make it interesting uh, but yeah I mean uh, I would really like to see three again oh yeah totally mm -hmm. Jose do you have any thoughts. Hello. Um, oh, <laughs> I feel like um, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. For me, it's kind of because, like, I mean, we haven't really had the opportunity. <laughs> well, I haven't had the opportunity to go to E3, mm -hmm. so for me, I don't think anything's gonna change. <laughs> I'm still gonna <laughs> see from a screen. <laughs> hey, man, um, yo, this podcast takes off, bro. We're going to E3. <laughs> That's right. We're all going. Um, so subscribe, yeah. um, but uh, <laughs> but I mean I I understand like that that there's like a lot of things that make E3 like if you go in person like there's certain things about E3 that you expect just you know so this transition into a, a digital platform um, I mean you obviously have to meet these expectations but now since it's gonna be digital you have to see how you're gonna make that work. So as you said, I mean, it is. It does sound like a lot of work. Um, we'll see if they're able to to deliver that. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not going to be the exact same experience because it's impossible to create that. But you know, to be able to deliver something that's um, satisfactory to to the audience, um, you know, that's that's what you can hope for. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think it's. It's a good idea. Uh, I think all of the other like conferences out there have transitioned into uh, a virtual or like a digital um, platform. So it's only natural. I mean, it was to be expected from E3 for them to to transition into that as well. Um, it's a good thing that they're not thinking of just flat out canceling it. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Nintendo ahead of its time, as we can see. <laughs> with the um, Nintendo Directs. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, so it, to me, it seems like they're they're keeping the same kind of format that E3 has been, just trans transitioning it to a digital format because those two-hour keynotes, they sound like the E3 conferences kind of to me. It says mm -hmm. multiple two-hour keynotes. Sounds like the E3 conferences. Okay. Yeah. I, I would I guess the like the demos would be like the only thing that they would have to kind of figure out how to do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it sounds like the normal like E3 experience at home for us. Hopefully that's the case. Like cuz oh man, E3 during June. It's Christmas. It's, it's it feels good. It feels good. I wouldn't say it's Christmas. There's different applications for Christmas, but it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, having those demos that are released at uh, E3, at E3 they have so many demos, and just having those like released to the public, or at least uh, even even just a few of them, there would be so much for us to chew on as as consumers that it would, I think it could work. I think that would that would boost their uh, their popularity with the with the um, consumer people rather than the media people. I know the media people are important, but. At the end of the day, we're the one buying games. So if they can reach us and get more of us in, 
into their platform or their their um, their E3 hype train, so to speak. I think that's a good it's a good deal. Y'all guys, you guys ready to move on to the next news story? You know, all right. So we have two more. The last one is um, more of a fun one. This one is about Ubisoft moving away from reliance on AAA releases. This is from Rebecca Valentine from IGN. So this is kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, Ubisoft's CFO, Frederick Duguet, says that they are moving from a AAA only model with three to four big hitters. So usually for so for right now, they're usually uh, releasing three to four big AAA games and having that sustain them for the most part. But now they're looking to move to uh, a model that incorporates AAA games as well, along with back catalog dynamics. So doing stuff with games they've already released, uh, free to play games and other premium experiences. Uh, premium quote unquote um, they're looking to do this so for uh, fiscal year 2022 they're looking to stay pretty much the same with the triple uh, a releases but for the next fiscal year so um, April 2022 and beyond they're looking to incorporate this new model they're talking about um, some of the big games that are coming up from Ubisoft they are Far Cry 6 Rainbow Six Quarantine, Skull and Bones, Riders Republic, uh, The Prince of Persia, Sands of Time Remake, and Roller Champions. Those are some of them. And um, right now, mobile makes up 9% of Ubisoft's business. So with this new plan, I'm assuming they're hoping to expand that share. A couple more details. Uh, this is a quote from, well, this is from the article. It says that uh, Ubisoft's financials indicate that games like Mario plus Rabbids, Kingdom Battle, Far Cry 5, The Crew 2, Anno 1800, um, older Just Dance games, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Rainbow Six Siege are still doing meaningful numbers for the company, meaning it doesn't necessarily need to churn out mul mul uh, multiple blockbusters a year to keep making money. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is um, doing very well as well. Um, so yeah, Ubisoft, they're going to be looking to make money in other ways to uh, expand their business, so to speak. Uh, what do you guys think about this move? Do you do you like it? Do you not like it? Is that good for us as core gamers? What do you guys think? Any, any thoughts? Oh, sorry about that. Um, I mean, I guess... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm not really. I I don't think I've played too many Ubisoft games. Um, I think the only one that like I'm invested in, I guess, to some extent, is uh, Rayman. Um, but so I mean, I I don't really. I guess it wouldn't affect me as much as a core gamer, quote unquote. Quote unquote. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a good thing i guess um to try to try to change it up and 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 see you know how they can expand um there's always it, i think it's it's always like a double-edged sword with these type of things um just because you know it could go either way really um so i mean good for you yourself i guess um but personally i mean it's not something that affects me i guess yeah totally. i don't know i don't know i, I don't want to sound too like Dismissive. Dismissive, yeah, but but yeah, I mean hopefully it works for them. Um yeah. 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 <clears throat> sorry. Uh for me, um and sorry about that, I was having issues with my microphone. Oh, it's okay. Um Um Yeah, for me, uh like you said, right? You said that they that they're thinking of maybe um putting more content into past games. Uh, you know, and, and put some focus on that as well. Uh, like, like that part, I, I think it's really cool. I, I think it's it's good for for the for gamers, I guess. Uh, at least for U Ubisoft gamers, um, right? Or, or or people who play their games, because uh, sometimes you know, 
uh, these games come out and then they just tend to be forgotten, you know, and they just move on to the next uh, game. Uh, so it, I think it's cool that, you know, if you if you were to invest in a, in a Ubisoft game, you know, there's going to be a, maybe new content released for that game and, and you'll be able to enjoy this game um, uh, for, for a longer period of time uh, before, you know, they forget about it. Um, so, I mean, I think that's, that's cool. Um, and, and it's cool to, to hear that they want to focus on another, uh, or have, or put more focus on, on more outside releases. And, and, and that should be, you know, I think overall, I think it's, it's, a at least that part, it's a, it's a win for, for video game players. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I don't know, like it's. And I think, like I said, it's very uh, uh, tricky because you know, uh, you you mentioned like the the mobile, right? The mobile uh, market that they right, they, yeah. they just like a nine percent. Uh, uh, it makes up nine percent of their uh, of their business, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you you start to get into like tricky or murky waters when. You know, if they put more attention to mobile games, for example, and then they, they don't put as much as attention to to uh, the bigger games or the bigger franchises, mm-hmm. uh, and not to downplay uh, mobile games, right? But usually, mobile games can be very uh, what's it called? They, they 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 want money from you, right? Or what's what's the word? Um, um they're more like a. I would say, like, for console games, they're more, uh, you buy it, and then you kind of know what you're getting for the most part. Mobile games are more, mm-hmm. like, predatory, trying to, like, right. find there ways to yeah, yeah. get money. Like, out predatory, of right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, they rely a lot in, in microtransactions. They rely on a lot of, uh, you know, pay to win. Um, so uh, it, if they start to focus, like, on those aspects in, in mobile games and things like that, then it's, I don't know. I don't know. It could be a very... Um, dangerous path they they walk on. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So for clarification, it's, they call it back catalog dynamics. So an uh, example that the um, author of the article said was, uh, so like Rainbow Six Siege, how they're constantly supporting that game, a back catalog game. I think things of that nature will that'll make the money because players are actively engaging with it are probably the direction they're going to be going. And um, yeah, the thing with Ubisoft is that they have some of my favorite games, like Assassin's Creed is like my second favorite franchise of all time. Um, and what else? They're, they have um, uh, Tom Clancy's blah, 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 Splinter Cell. They have mm-hmm. um, those kind of Rayman. cool games. Yeah. Rayman, mm-hmm. there you go. And um, these other, and then there's some games that are misses, you know, like Far Cry. I'm not really down for, even though I know that game, that franchise is good. The Crew Two, I mean, sure, but people like it for sure. Um, Anno 1800, I heard good things about. Just Dance is like, that's not that's not in our element. So, um, but Just Dance is making the money. So I guess from a from my standpoint, like them coming back from maybe not releasing so many AA games, maybe one less or whatever it may be, uh, if that's what they're going to do. I mean, I think they're going to be supporting, you know, Assassin's Creed, which is good for me, but Splinter Cell, I don't know, maybe they'll make everybody upset and make it a free-to-play or a quote-unquote premium experience, whatever they want to do with that, which is kind of scary that their IP that are dormant might not see the light of day because they don't want to. Right. Do AA that's true, like, they might... They might focus on, on their big franchises that's making them money, and forget about the ones that, that have been like you said dormant for for years. And that is true. I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's the one thing that scares me about it. And this premium, mm-hmm. quote unquote, premium services, like I don't, experiences. I mean, premium, quote unquote, premium experiences. Whatever that is, that sounds uh yeah, that sounds very. <laughs> you need to pay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see how that goes, but Ubisoft Plus. <laughs> I know they have their own storefront. I mean, I never used yeah. it, but and I think they have their own reward system too. No, like um, Ubisoft. Yeah. 
uh, I don't even remember what it was. You play. You play. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually liked you play. Like back in the day, like in the, you get pretty cool stuff. That's in game stuff, and it's not that hard to get. So I always like you play. I don't know how it is now, but yeah, yeah. Hey, did y'all know they're making an Avatar game? Like the the last Airbender. I think it's no. I think it's the other Avatar. Let me see. Uh, the, oh, the blue, the blue, the blue one. I think I. I heard about it. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I remember thinking, why? Yeah. <laughs> but it's coming from Ubisoft? Yeah, Ubisoft Blue by the Avatar Project. Uh, embarking on a major journey in the world of Pandora. So, yeah, the, <laughs> the blue people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. It was announced in early 2017. It's crazy. I mean, or I don't know. We'll see, I guess, how it does. Yeah. I don't know if it was in early 2017. Yeah, announced. Announced, yeah. So, yeah, they have a bunch of games to, that are yet to be released. We got Skull and Bones in the back in the back burner still. Beyond Good and Evil on the back burner still. So, we shall see. We got one more story to talk about, and this is about video game sales. You guys are going to be active participants in this one to try to guess what were the best-selling games of January 2021. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. So before we get into that, uh, hardware, um, this is information I've gotten from Eddie Matkush from GameSpot, and the data is from the NPD group. So hardware, the Nintendo Switch was once again the top selling platform based on units sold, reaching the highest of any console, Nintendo or otherwise, since the Nintendo Wii in January 2010. The PS5, however, drove the most spending in terms of dollars due to its more expensive price point. Nintendo ruling the world. Basically. All right, top 20 best-selling games in the U.S. for January January 2021. Um, it was actually a lot. It's, it's pretty similar <laughs> to what we've been talking about. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are probably already know what number one is. Let me hear it. Animal Crossing? Number five. Number five. Oh. Oh, um, Call of Duty. <laughs> Thank you. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, number one. I'm leaving. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Retire. Uh, it, it was a good show. Um. <laughs> I keep I keep this at the end thinking it's gonna be a feel good thing, but then I see the list of games, I'm like, oh. All right. Um, no offense to Call of Duty fans out there, you know. It's just shout out. <laughs> no, anyway, though, I, I kind of be interested in in trying out the the multiplayer, like the Warzone. Oh yes, dude. I've heard a, I've heard a lot of people say it's it's either the best or one of the best like um what's battle royale. Yeah, battle, yeah, battle royale. Dang, I'm mm-hmm. linking tree. Uh, so but I've... yeah, it, it, and and yeah, I've seen like some gameplay of it. And it's, it's it looks like it's it's fun. Yo, like um, shout out to this to this guy uh, these these knives only on YouTube, dude. This guy, right up my alley, using knives and stun grenades <laughs> in in a freaking war zone. That's how I'm Is gonna that be playing. Thing you said? That's it. That's his account. Damn. Oh, he does have a shield though. The right shield. You have seen that one, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So the right shield paired with knives and um, throwing knives and grenades, stun grenades and flash. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I don't know about Flash. I think it's just stun. Anyway, moving on. Uh, number two game. This is from Ubisoft. What do you guys think? Valhalla. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Valhalla number two. Best-selling game in January 2021. Interesting, huh? Yep. Is this the first time it's in the top five? No, dude. Like We were talking about the best-selling games from 2021. 
And Valhalla was up there. Yeah. I don't know. For some reason, I never, like, I never think about Valhalla as, like, a popular game, you know? I don't know why. Like, I know it's a popular franchise. Like, I know it's a huge franchise, but it's, I guess, I don't know. Like, I never, it never registers in my mind for some reason. But right. good for them. Right. Definitely. Uh, number three, this is from um, Sony. Number three, they're taking taking the number three spot with what what game? Uh, Ghost of Tsushima? Ghost of Tsushima. It's not it. Let me see if it's on the list. No Ghost of Tsushima on this list. Tsushima. Another um, franchise. Is it pretty obvious? Yes. Damn. Um. Said in, uh, I was going to say something. I was going to give it away. You talked about it earlier in the podcast. Well, not this one in particular, but the franchise. No? Nothing? The Last of Us? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I can't, I can't think of anything. Resident Evil? Tobey Maguire. Oh, Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man Miles Morales, number three. Sea Biscuit, the game. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Okay, so number four, Madden twenty, NFL twenty one, of course. Uh, Animal, Crossing, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, number five. No digital. Number six is another Nintendo game. This is Mario Kart. Mario Kart. What? Oh my yeah. god. No digital. We're never gonna get uh, Mario Kart 9. Rip. Like, these are physical sales. They're just people just walking into Walmarts and GameStops, just like, hey, let me get that Mario Kart. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, I guess it makes sense, though, because I mean, it reflects on like the Switch sales. You know, there's a lot of people that are just barely buying a Switch. Um, and so naturally, they want a, a game that they know, you know, it's, it's, it's good or that is a solid purchase, you know? And yeah. so I guess yeah. Mario Kart 8 is, like, pretty solid. I wonder, sure. do they count, like, the bundled Switch? Because I know there's Switches that are bundled with Mario Kart 8. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Well, I don't think they come with a physical copy, though. I think it's a digital code, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Could you imagine digital sales now, though? I know. I know. If people are willing to walk in person into a store to buy a game, <laughs> like Mario Kart 8 or order released, it. like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Strange times, dude. I mean, Nintendo said <laughs> Nintendo Magic. Yep. Yeah. Uh, number seven. I'm very surprised about this one. Refit Adventure. Number seven. Uh, Still don't have that. It's pretty good. Number eight. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh, number nine. This is the last Nintendo game in the top ten. Animal Crossing? Animal Crossing was number five. Oh. Um. Um. Pikmin. Pikmin 3, obviously. Smash? Mm-hmm. What? What? Smash. I guess. Bro, number nine. No digital. Pikmin is not on this list, bro. <laughs> yeah, Pik Pikmin is not going to be on any list. They're lost. They're missing out. <laughs> All right, number 10, NBA 2K21. No digital. 
All right. All so, right. So next segment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Quick list off of Sorry. 11 through 20. Wait, you, what you, what you talking about being savage over there? No, no, no. <laughs> I said I'm such a hater. Oh. <laughs> My bad. I, I apologize to everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're right. You're right. All right. Number 11 through 20, we have Super Mario 3D All-Stars, no digital. Number 12, FIFA 21. 13, Immortals Phoenix Rising. 14, Mortal Kombat 11. 15, Just Dance 2021. 16, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, no digital. 17, Minecraft PS4 edition. 18, Cyberpunk 2020, <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077, no digital. Uh, 19, Super Mario, Super Mario Party, no digital. And 20, UFC 4. Just a clarification, Nintendo is the only one that doesn't include digital sales? Um, there's a couple of case? others. There's hmm. a couple of others, um, but Nintendo mostly. Okay. So like in the list when it doesn't specify no digitals, we can assume that they they are included in that title? Yes. Oh. That, that's interesting. Like for some games that don't include digitals to actually be able to compete with games that do on the list, it's it's pretty it's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. All right. So just for funsies, there's also a couple of other lists I have here. Top ten for Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. Um, we're not gonna go through them all. I'm just gonna point out some things I think were interesting. Um, do you think that Pikmin 3 Deluxe sold more than Super Mario Odyssey in January 2021? My heart wants to say yes. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I don't think so. Yeah. Actually, that's kind of a... I don't know myself because I don't know if they'll count digital. Uh, maybe a better question would have been, do you think it sold be better than um, Super Mario Party? No digital. Mm. No, I don't think so. No, I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I'm not gonna keep Rip. going with this game. This is very depressing for. Me. <laughs> Rip, okay, fans, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought it'd be fun. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. So, Pikmin Three Deluxe not in the top ten for January 2021, unfortunately. Um, all the other games you well, expect. Yeah, kind of whack. All the other games you would expect are here. For PlayStation, Pokemon. Pokemon. Is Pokemon in the list? Pokemon. Which Pokemon would it be? Sword and Shield. Oh, no. Nah. Still selling? <laughs> Rip. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah. Um, For PlayStation, Ghost of Tsush uh, Tsushima is number seven on the PlayStation Top 10 list. January 2021. Good for that. Demon Souls is number six. And for Xbox, um, they have Forza, Forza Horizon 4 on their list. Number five. That's cool. Yeah. Forza is the racing game, right? Yeah. Forza. Yeah. That's right. And, um, yeah, that's going to do it for the data we have that were interesting. Um, thanks for playing along with the segment, guys. No problem. I'm depressed now. I'm depressed. We're not getting Pikmin for our week. <laughs> uh, all right. So now, 1998 games ranking. Here we go. Ooh, baby. Here we go. So here are the games. They are Half-Life, Banjo-Kazooie, Resident Evil 2, Metal Gear Solid, and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So, I mean, we already know number one. Just put that there. <laughs> Like legit, like I don't think it's a it's a discussion, right? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. I mean yeah. just widely considered one of the best games um ever created. Uh, 
Metal Gear Solid should be number one. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> a crying of time, I think, definitely needs to be up there. Uh, very influential uh, with the whole, you know, locking, sea locking system. Right. Um, uh, the first, right. Um, uh, the first three D Zelda and the way they did it, it's like pretty amazing. Uh, somewhat of an open world for I mean for what it was back then you know yeah you you were able to to walk around in this this world or, or environment um that is Hyrule so uh, yeah I think I think that should be number one for me yeah I agree Ocarina of Time holds I up I agree Jose agrees he says it's a classic definitely a classic so number one Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Does that make Metal Gear Solid number two? Mm-hmm. Out of okay, out of res- I'll, go I'll go ahead. Can you go ahead and say all the uh, the other games? Yeah. So what's left? Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil Two, Banjo Kazooie, and Half Life. Yeah, for me, it's between Metal Gear Solid and and half life mm. hmm i did not anticipate this discussion <laughs> yeah no i think metal gear solid is the natural second place um i mean metal gear solid is like a staple in in sony so mm-hmm. i mean Okay, put it this way. Which of those two is still ongoing? Well, I mean... <laughs> Both. <laughs> oh, not um, Metal Gear. Yeah, no, no. I don't think... I don't know about that one anymore, but... <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty long-lasting franchise that... I mean, there's a reason why Snake is on Smash, you know, as a Sony representative. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think I think it deserves a second spot. Metal Gear Solid. I'll have to agree. Yeah, I'll go with that too as well. Yeah. Just because I mean, it it gave us a, a very, it gave us a franchise, you know, that a lot of people love, and it has that Kojima touch. Um. So, yeah, I agree. Cool. All right, Metal Gear Solid at number two. Um, we have three more left. Um, I feel like Half Life belongs at three. What do you guys think? Because we already gave kudos to Resident Evil, the original. Right, I, I think I think so too. Um, it's it's a classic or well, a cult classic, I guess. Um, and and I, I for some people regard it as one. Uh, their favorite games are one of the best games ever created as well. So mm-hmm. uh, back when Valve made games. Um, and, and I mean, we, we got what, Half-Life Alex? Like, what was it? Was it last year? Last year. Yeah, last year. And, and that game, a lot of people praise it as well. So, so I mean, if we were talking about, you know, Metal Gear Solid, how it gave us all the, this franchise, I mean, Half-Life as well, you know. Yeah. Yo, for some reason, when I think of Half-Life, like, its influence, I think of more, I think of Bioshock. Same. Yeah, something like that. I always, I always um, associate both of those for some reason. Really? Really? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know why, but yeah, it's always been like that for me, too. Interesting. Maybe because both have, like, a post-apocalyptic feel to it. Yeah, maybe. First person shooter gameplay. Right. All right. So the last one to round out our bottom of the top. Resident Evil 2 or Banjo Kazooie? Which one is four? Uh, I want to say Banjo and Kazooie is four. You think so? think so? Yeah, only because I feel like, like it's one of those. I don't know. You could say the same about Resident Evil. Um, I want to say Banjo 
because Resident Evil 2 is the shining beacon of Resident Evil, right? When people are like, go back to your roots, they're like, Resident Evil 2 is where they point to. Right. Or the remake. Uh, it's kind of hard for me. Um, I would say like Resident Evil, and I'm not too sure about this, but uh, the Resident Evil 2 like in, uh, introduced like the whole uh, an enemy that follows you um, mm. into like the the, the horror, you know, the, a horror game, you know, like that. I don't know. I'm not sure if it was like the first game that did something like that. Uh, or maybe Silent Hill did. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, that'd be interesting uh, to to see or, or to research. Uh, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because I mean, Resident Evil 2, it's also like a huge improvement from from the first one. Right. Uh, a lot of people, right, they, they regard it as one of the the best or if not the best because you know you're actually in a city now uh you're actually seeing you know zombies walking in the street and, and you're like in the p police department and it has this a uh, much more scary vibe um than the first game that was very um it, it was only focused on, on one spot like this mansion and and i don't know um And I mean banjo. I, I never played banjo. Um, I know, I know. And I think that's one of the problems because I, I mean a lot of people as well. They, it's, it's a, it's one of their favorites, right? A childhood favorites. And and I don't know. It, it'd be an interesting discussion to see like if banjo kazooie uh, holds up uh, or how it holds up uh, next to other three uh, uh, D platformers, right? Of the of its time. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, like, I might even say it holds up better than Mario 64. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. I've seen gameplay of Banjo Kazooie. Um, I don't know how it feels. You know, I'm all about feel, but how it looks is just yeah, it's like your it's like your regular your your typical like. How you would think a Nintendo sixty four game platformer would look like, right? I think I will go with Resident Evil, honestly. I think so too. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, after what you said, I feel like it. I it feels like it has a more lasting impact, right? Um, when you like zoom out, um. So yeah, I think Resident Evil deserves to be a, above. Um, Benjamin Kasui. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Banjo. You have to be number five. Get out of here. Get out of here, <laughs> out of here Banjo. Give me back your smash spot. I'm mess, I'll mess yeah. up. <laughs> Give it to Jill. Uh, <laughs> Actually. Or Leon, I guess. Since we're talking about Resident Evil 2. Nice. Or Claire, I guess. <laughs> Banjo Kazooie fans, man, we show us the light. Show us the light. What are we missing? All right. So this is gonna be our list. Number five, Banjo Kazooie. Number four, Resident Evil Two. Number three, Half Life. Number two, Metal Gear Solid. And number one, The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Try. Right. All right. And with that, we have come to the end of our podcast. We have been Roll Jump Media. Thank you for watching. Uh, what we do here at Roll Jump Media, we create this podcast. We aim for every week. Uh, if you were to join us here on Twitch or on YouTube or on uh, podcast services we are on, like on Apple or on um, Spotify, we'd be glad to have you. Uh, we also make YouTube videos on occasion, so check us out on that one. And we also stream on Twitch. Uh, yesterday, I streamed a little bit of Lost Planet 2, a hidden gem. So if you wanted to join us on that one as well, that'd be great. We're also on social media. We're on, um, just type in Roll Jump Media and your favorite social media. And more likely than not, we'll be on there. We're not on a couple, but um, that's all right. All right, so 
audience, thank you for watching. And before we sign off, do my co-hosts have anything to say? Thank you for, for listening to us. Uh, keep playing games. Play uh, Super Mario 3D World. Thank you guys. Till next time. All right. Thank you. We'll see you next time.